look, this is a more serious subject. As Australia's ice epidemic continues to grow, Senator David Lionhelm says we should consider legalising this drug. It's a controversial view, but similar policies have worked in other countries. And Senator Lionhelm joins us now. It's great to see you, David. Um, what makes you confident about uh, this change in policy? Oh, I'm not confident about it. Uh, nobody disputes that ice is a dangerous drug. That's, that's not in question. And I'm not really suggesting full legalisation. I, I do say that should be the case with marijuana. But ice is a dangerous drug and people who are taking ice harm other people, unlike marijuana. There was a motion on Thursday, though, in the Senate which said, under no circumstances should we consider legalising ice because it's a very bad drug. I protested at that motion. Um, there wasn't a vote on it, but I would have voted against it if there had been. And um, I don't think you can just rule out the possibility of legalising something because we don't have any other options. Um, it's, it, you know, you can't just, you can't just do that. You know, everyone's looking for the answer to this because it's such a widespread problem and it's such a, a vicious attack on, you know, the, the community and, and the people that are fall victim to this drug. We, we've heard all sorts of solutions from, uh, you know, treating the, 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 the users of this drug with, with more love and attention and keeping them in the community rather than isolating them. We've heard the opposite view. Uh, it, the Singaporean m method is to just take them off the streets and put them into forced uh, care. Mm. Um, Legalising it in, uh, makes it more palatable in what way? How, do, how does this res restrict people from getting involved with the drug? Well, Portugal provides a bit, of an, a bit of an idea of how things would go. Um, they don't criminalise drug possession, drug use by individuals of any description. Heroin, cocaine, ice, marijuana, the whole lot. They do still criminalise uh, dealing in it. So uh, the idea is that uh, they treat people who are addicted to the drugs as a medical problem, not a criminal problem. So the police don't run around arresting people for possession of small amounts of drugs and, and for using drugs. The police resources can then be directed at, at uh, interfering with the drug trade and, uh, and concentrates on the people making money out of the misery. That's, that's essentially the, the bottom line. They've, they've been doing that now for about uh, 14 or 15 years. There hasn't been an explosion in use. There hasn't been any marked deterioration in the, in the sort of health of the country, if you like. There hasn't been any marked drop in drug use either, it must be said. And there's a proportion of people who are always going to take drugs and, and it's very difficult to you know, know what to do about those sort of people. I'm on a parliamentary joint committee on law enforcement. We've heard evidence from experts who've told us there aren't in fact any more overall drug users, but the, uh, the percentage of them is around about the same. There's more people using ice now, but that's a result of less people using, say, heroin or crack cocaine. Right. OK, that's interesting, that, because the feeling that you could get, uh, you know, watching us this morning is that this is an epidemic that's going to sweep right over us. Mm. It's interesting that the overall numbers haven't changed that much. Um, and, and I think the Portuguese method um, shows uh, that there is a reduction in expenditure and mm. that, that treating them with a more loving hand uh, rather than a punishing hand uh, actually has cost benefits as well. Yes, I, I, the evidence is not overwhelming, but it, it does suggest that if you treat it as a medical problem rather than a criminal problem, mm. at least usage, mm -hmm. I'm not talking about dealing, but usage is a medical problem, it does seem to save money, um, it, it, there's no worse outcomes and in some cases there are better outcomes. You don't have police running around in black pyjamas jumping out of helicopters with guns just for people using uh, drugs. They can pr uh, concentrate their resources on, on places that really matter. Senator, we nearly got through the year without changing Prime Ministers. Uh, we don't seem to be able to manage it in this country. Uh, five new PMs in five years. Um, what do you make of the change to Malcolm Turnbull? First of all, is this a good thing for the country? Uh, well, the government was probably going to lose the next election with, with Mr Abbott as the Prime Minister, and that was the first thing. Um, so the question then became a matter of whether we wanted Mr Shorten as the Prime Minister. Um, the Liberal Party obviously saw that that was going to happen, so they decided something needed to occur. I was a bit surprised that it happened before the Canning by-election. I thought they might wait until after that. Mm -hmm. uh, I got uh, caught by surprise. But I like Mr Turnbull. He's a, he's a, a nice guy, um, very friendly, gregarious. He's reached out to the crossbench. Um, at a personal level, I agree. He and I agree on quite a number of things. Um, so from a personal point of view, I welcome it. The question will be whether he can bring the Australian public with him. Um, his argument for a change was based on economics. 
Um, we have a bad budget situation, it's getting worse. Uh, we need to bring our debt under control, we need to bring our expenditure under control. If he can convince the Australian public on those things, then it will be fantastic. We've had a series of very weak governments, um, and largely because of the influence of the crossbenchers. Uh, do you think he's going to be able to, to harness your individual forces and, and create something good for Australia? We, we had a, a, a meeting on another matter during the week, uh, six of us uh, on the crossbench, and we were chatting about this, and there was no negative feelings at all about Mr Turnbull, where there are several people on the crossbench, not me, I hasten to add, mm -hmm. who, who weren't very positive about Mr Abbott. He's already reached out to us all and had a chat to us all. I think the early signs are really good. Um, if he wants... Some of, the, some of the legislation the government wanted to get through, they lost very narrowly. Um, I think if they brought, brought some of that back, and he, he got involved personally in um, talking to some of my crossbench colleagues, the outcome could actually be different. Good talking to you, Senator. Thanks for your time this morning. My pleasure. Deb? All right.